All right, everybody, we are going to do that sister bungee board problem. Just go ahead and leave all this stuff up because it's all accurate. She's bungeeing off 60 meter tall uh, objects, 55 uh, kilograms. The rest length that's kind of hard to see is 20 meters of the bungee cord, which means basically when it's all coiled up and nothing stretched out, it should be 20 meters or 20 meters unstretched. Okay, uh, she's gonna stop halfway down. It doesn't look like she's actually attached to anything right now, so she'll probably figure that out now. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, four meters uh, above the water. Okay, we're gonna look for two things. One, what is her K value during that particular time? And then once we have the K value, what is the velocity all the way down? So uh, we talked a lot about this in class, but just a couple things. Number one, when starting a problem, you need to establish where your initial spot and where your final spot is. Okay, where exactly you are and where you're looking. One thing we haven't yet talked about in class is initial and final are kind of arbitrary. You could really call it position one and position two because conservation of energy is true the entire time. Energy is equal to here, 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 and so on and so forth. And you can compare any of them. So which spots do I choose? The spots where you have enough information. So yeah, probably at the top and then four meters up. So instead of initial and final in this case, I'm going to say um, energy at the top is equal to energy at the bottom. Specifically, mechanical energies in this case, because no non-conservative forces are doing energy. So when I got those mechanical energies up there, I'm just going to fill that out. This is going to be potential gravity at the top plus potential elastic at the top plus kinetic at the top is equal potential of gravity at the bottom plus potential of elastic at the bottom plus kinetic at the bottom. Now, I like to start canceling out stuff that I know disappears. I realize that's off the screen, so there we go. Um, if you're struggling with how something does or doesn't cancel, you don't have to worry about it. It's a little bit more work, but what you then do is you basically just fill out all the individual equations and when stuff is zero, it'll cancel itself out. So for example, uh, right here, I know that kinetic at the top is not moving, so I could zero that. If you were uncomfortable with that, you'd go one half mv squared, and then you'd realize that the speed at the top is also zero, which is why it overall cancels out. And so that goes to zero. She's also not moving at the bottom right down here, so kinetic at the bottom is zero. Like I said in class, if you had noticed that ahead of time setting up the problem, um, you cannot write kinetic energies in if they're both going to zero out. If only one of them zeroes out, it's probably important to show that it zeroes out, so you do still want to write it. Okay, um, Elastic at the top should be zero because the bungee cord is not stretched yet. Whether or not there's gravity at the bottom depends on where you place your zero. I am not going to cancel it right here because, again, that zero of the uh, number will do that. And I'm going to show you that it really doesn't matter whether or not you decide that the ground is zero, so height final is four and height initial is 60, or if you decide that the person is zero, so that height final is zero and height initial is 56. All right, so let's go ahead. Potential of gravity at the top is mass times gravity times height at the top. Nothing, nothing is equal to mass times gravity times height at the bottom is e plus, sorry, not equal to, one half K displacement, or this is the amount stretched at the bottom squared. And we're solving for K right over there. So this is an algebraic problem. Let's go ahead and take this piece and subtract it over. And I'll show a few more algebraic steps than I usually do, because I want to show you some nice thing that actually can happen to make your life a little bit easier. Here, where I wrote MGHT and MGHB for top and bottom, remember that M and G are the same in both terms. Now, while they're not in every term to cancel, one nice thing that you could do is you could factor them out. And it writes a little bit cleaner. You write a little bit less, and you're going to write numbers down a little bit less time. Then we're going to multiply both sides by 2, which can go out here, cancel over there, and divide by delta x b squared. Now when I plug in, I should get 2 times 55 kilograms times g. Uh, then, And this is where I wanted to point out that it doesn't matter, because if you had said 60 and 4, the difference in here is 56, 
or if you had said 56 and zero, the difference in here is 56. It's going to be the same regardless. So I'll just go with the 60 and four, but yeah, as you can see, it doesn't really matter. And divide by delta x squared, which should be 36. Where's that 36 come from? Well, the rest length is 20 meters. So for the first 20 meters of her fall, nothing is stretched. Once she's fallen 21 meters, then it's stretched by one meter, okay? So I need to know how far it's stretched from here, 20 meters down to here. Well, the total is 60, take off 20. That means this leftover piece is 40. Subtract the four because she's not gonna hit the water. That's where we're getting 36. Plug all that in. And I believe the answer is, oh, I just did this earlier. I should already have this ready. Two times 56 times 9.8 times 56. Oops, I said 56 first. Divided by 36 squared, 46.6. And the units on that would be newtons per meter. At this point in time, I'm going to transition to the second half. If you have not yet started the second half, the only thing is you have all of the same numbers, except I'm going to take that answer. I'm going to put it over here because now it's also part of our given newtons per meter to help us with the second half. So pause the video here. If you haven't done it, go do it. And then I'll start. Wait, wait, wait. Off we go for the second part. All right. So I'm going to set up almost the exact same way. It's kind of one of the nice things about this. We're trying to find the speed half the way down. So let's go back up here to the beginning. Sorry for this kind of being in the way. We'll make do. And mechanic, conservation of mechanical energy. We have potential of gravity at the top, plus uh, potential of elastic at the top, plus kinetic at the top. Now, I actually didn't have to erase this because these numbers still don't change. They're zero. But I don't want to compare it to the bottom anymore because obviously I know what the speed is at the bottom, that's zero, and we're trying to find the speed here. So let's go and find the mechanical energy. Let's go half of height, halfway down. You can draw whatever you want there. Uh, you just want to write final or two or three or just whatever for that spot, that's fine. This is what I'm going to use. So is equal to potential of gravity at half height plus elastic at half height plus kinetic at half height. Now we've already said there's gonna be gravity at the top. There's no elastic, it's not stretched and it's not moving at the top. Is there gravitational energy at halfway? Well, once again, you can reset your zero. When things get like kind of moving around like this, it's probably good though to set one zero and stick with it. So I'm gonna stick with the water. So is the water zero, then yes, it does have gravitational energy at that spot. If of course you decided that to be your zero, that's fine. But once again, you have to reestablish your initial height as 30 meters, not the 60 from the water. Elastic, is it stretched? Well, okay, let's see. She is halfway, so that would be 30 meters from the top. Rest length is 20. Yes, it has in fact been stretched. So yes, there's gonna be elastic energy. Is there kinetic? Well, there better be. We're trying to find the speed, person moving. And yeah, we do expect obviously a person to be falling all the way down to have that kinetic energy. So none of them over there on the right cancel. So let's go ahead and start filling in. This is mass times gravity times height at the top is equal to mass times gravity times height at one half height. I'm not loving that subscript, but that's okay. Uh, plus one half K times delta X at one half height, plus one half mass times speed. Oh, sorry, that, that delta X should be squared because that's just that equation at one half height. And of course, we're just doing algebra to solve for that guy over there, okay? So since I've got four terms, the easiest thing to do in the beginning is just some addition and subtraction to move the terms that we don't want well, trying to find out of the way. We're trying to find something in here. So let's move these to the other side by simple subtraction. So, and I'm also going to factor at the same time with this, just like you saw me do on the last one. Okay. And that would be minus one half K delta X at one half height squared. And that's equal to one half mass velocity at one half height squared. Now, of course, you might have to use a few more lines for this algebra. I have the advantage of the whiteboard here. So I'm going to multiply 
everything by two, which of course cancels the right side. And I could either multiply by two, multiply by two, there's advantages to that, or just put a parenthesis around the whole thing. So we multiply by two and multiply by two. There you go. Divide by mass on both sides, we cancel here. And again, divide underneath over there, same sort of thing. You could put it like this, or you could do it individually by term. That would cancel the mass there, but that would be divided by mass, that's up to you. And we still see a squared, so let's square root both sides. And there it is, kind of messy, but we can do this. Two over 55 kilograms times, 55 kilograms times G, height top is, that's unfortunate, 60 meters minus height middle was 30 meters. And once again, you'll see that it doesn't matter resetting that because if you had set your zero at the bottom, that would be zero and that would be 30. The advantage of course of setting that zero is that we would not have to worry about that term at all. Anyway, so 30, all right, minus one half times K, which we learned was 46.6 newtons per meter. And then what is delta X? Well, she's gone 30 meters, rest is 20. So it means it's been stretched by 10. So that's gonna be 10 meters squared. The whole thing, let me do brackets here at the end to kind of just not confuse myself with all the parentheses I'm using. Square root the whole thing. That should spit out our speed. So we have, I like to do everything inside parentheses first, 55 times 9.8 times 30, okay. Minus one half times 46.6 .6 times 10 squared. So inside that is 13,840 uh, multiplied by two. Okay. Divide by 55, square root the whole thing. And the answer is 22.4 meters per second. There we go. That's how you can find the speed. And yeah, that looks a little bit messy. Like I said, you can use multiple steps for that. Um, and then just take your time. You should be good. That's it.